So good morning. Uh, I hope you slept well. I slept so-so. I foolishly decided to stay in this wind shelter and it was quite cold uh, last night. Uh, can't have been more than a couple of degree degrees Celsius. Uh, I've kind of been fooled by the weather la lately. We have had quite warm weather. But it's quite clear now that uh, summer isn't here quite yet. Uh, it's still in April here. So yeah, it is what it is. I slept a couple of hours at least, so I hope that's enough. I will try and explore uh, a bit more of the, the area here, uh, especially the beach. I do think there's a big potential there uh, for some nice photography. So that's what the plan for today, and, uh, and we'll see. I probably sleep in the tent tonight. Uh, first, some breakfast, some oatmeal, and uh, some instant coffee. Talk to you in a bit. back at the same location we were last night this time in the morning or late morning the sun has risen quite a bit I'm a bit late as I usually am on the mornings but I don't really mind it especially as I'm shooting black and white and as you can see I'm shooting with the roller flex from a tripod even though I could handheld this uh, 1 over 250 of a second at f11 reason for that is twofold one is, I kind of forgot to bring the neck strap for this camera and it's kind of cumbersome to carrying it in your hand. And secondly, my plan was actually to shoot handheld with this little camera, my Minox 35 GT. So this is, will be for the snapshots and these for this lit, a bit more careful composition if you like. Uh, I'm not sure if this is that careful. This is more to get the first image in, to get things rolling. Always good to do that, even if the first image is so-so. Just overlooking this kind of alien-looking landscape. That's a bit of a play with shadows, having these grasses in the foreground. Uh, taking two exposures, one with the grasses in focus and one with the, the background in focus. We'll see which one I like the best. And uh, now I better get cracking and get on with this little trekking, trekking path I'm on. About six kilometers roadway trip. So We'll be out the better part of this morning, we'll end up back somewhere after lunch, I reckon.
So I always get a bit anxious when I'm on locations like these. They are beautiful to the naked eyes and I really love go out and explore. This is why I do photography. It's the reason for me to look what's behind the next hill, what's behind the next corner, that sort of thing. But the images, I'm not super confident in any of them. The big vista at the start, uh, I reckon that will be quite bad. The kind of abstract down here at the beach, uh, not too sure about that either. Kind of miss my woodlands. I know what to do in the woodlands. I don't really know what to do at the beach like this. But this is what's fun, it's challenging, and it's uh, fun to see something else. Uh, yeah, I do have, I think, about a kilometers left on this route. I could intertwine it with another route, and I would add like two kilometers or something like that. Uh, or just head back to the lighthouse where we started. Uh, we'll see, I have to get by on this quite majestic beach first. finish off the roll. Uh, I'm not going to load any more film right now as I don't really want to load it at this sunny beach. Uh, I think we are going to cut the route sh short so we're going to head up towards the lighthouse as soon as we get to that path. Uh, if we get anything on the way we just do it, do it with the digital or with the Minox. Uh, and then we'll see where we go from here. It's, it's been a lovely morning out even though photography might be a bit lackluster thus far. Uh, this image, when in doubt, shoot the obvious. So this is just looking straight down towards the beach here. What makes it slightly more interesting is there's a couple of different luminosity within it. So quite a dark rock in the foreground, kind of shadowing behind this uh, big uh, sand stack right next to me, and then it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. Two problems with this uh, scene. The first is the normal problem, I can't get everything in focus with one shot, or almost not. Uh, and what I do then is I look at the foreground element, because I agree with Ansel Adams there, that uh, foreground elements are more important to have in reasonable focus. So I kind of figure out that's about six meters for me, five, six meters. And I'm just using the little depth of field preview on the focusing knob on this Roloflex and putting that at the near limit. And then everything else just falls where it falls. And it's just shy of the infinity mark. So it might just work out. The second problem though, that's down to me. My own footsteps in, is in the scene. Yeah. I didn't know it was there when I walked here, so I just walked right through it, right next to my foreground element. So it might not be visible in the image, but uh, I know they are there. It is what it is. Let's get cracking and get back to the lighthouse and get some lunch there, I think.
out in the fun little dip. We have to cross there. There's no way around it. This is going to be cold. Blimey, that got wet. You do a stupid thing every now and again. I might be doing it more often than others. But I do remember thinking that the water was quite shallow on the side I stood. I recall thinking I might be able to do this with my boots on, as I do have a watertight rubber bottom. But I did remove my boots and hiked up my trousers and went out into the ocean. And it was fine, until I cut the corner. All of a sudden, the ocean's floor kind of dropped. And as it did that, a big wave hit me from behind and I lost my balance. Going for an unexpected swim. And that wasn't even the stupid part. The stupid part was I haven't secured my stuff. I even had packed some dry bags that I left in the car. But still, I had my mobile phone in my front pocket as well as my lovely minus camera. Both survived. Just spit out the seawater and kept on rolling. However, I was carrying my boots in my hand and I dropped them. I was able to get them up, but they were soaking wet. They would have been fine, but they have these wool insoles that also got soaking wet. So I kind of removed them and uh, continue the hike without the insoles. Putting on the top of my bag to dry out. It was quite a big hike. In the video I said it was perhaps 7-8 kilometers. I must have misread something or missed a turn or something because I end up doing like 15 kilometers. When I got back to my car, walking without the insoles, uh, my feet was kind of sore and the insoles were still wet. So I ended up calling it, just cutting the trip short and drive home again. I did place the insoles in the back window of my car to let them dry out and arriving home 5-6 hours later, it was still kind of wet. So at least that was the correct decision. And I did end up with a couple of images I'm quite pleased with. One even made it onto paper in my darkroom already. Kind of a crooked print and uh, do need a bit more work, but it's a start. I suspect a couple of these images will make it on to paper. And I did learn something. Next time I'll be sure to secure my stuff before going out into the water. I must admit, I was kind of down after that trip. But I wasn't beaten, I was determined to get out again and I had another trip the week after. So make sure you subscribe for that and I'll see you in the next one. Do take care and bye.